Thank you for joining us. We are excited to bring you another Mission Essential Conversation. My name is Tom Middleton. I am the president of Mission Essential Intelligence Solutions, or MEIS. As a trusted partner to the defense and intelligence communities, MEIS supports intelligence operations for warfighters worldwide. Our Intel Center of Excellence provides timely, insightful, and objective intelligence about the activities, capabilities, plans, and intentions of potential threats both at home and abroad. I joined the company in the middle of 2020. I've been supporting the intelligence community for over 30 years. Prior to joining Mission Essential, I was with General Dynamics Information Technology as an executive in a variety of growth and intelligence and operation roles for the Intel and Homeland Security Division. Today, I am talking with Dr. Kelly Toppin. As a senior data scientist here at MEIS, Kelly will be telling us more about AI and machine learning and the role they play in national security today. Thanks for being with us today, Kelly. Can you tell me a little bit more about your role at Mission Essential? Thank you, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello, everyone. My role at Mission Essential is to develop state-of-the-art machine learning artificial intelligence applications to improve the situational awareness and decision-making of the warfighter. I work with a team of data scientists and domain experts to develop data-driven machine learning solutions. Thank you. We, we hear a lot in the news and the media about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, there are many different descriptions about what AI is and, 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 and what it can do. What is artificial intelligence? Great question, Tom. The term artificial intelligence was first coined in 1955 at a summer research project at Dartmouth University. They define AI as the problem of making a machine behave in ways that it would be called intelligent if a human were so behaving. Why that's a lot of words, let's transition to a more modern definition. AI is a system's ability to interpret external data correctly, to learn from the data, and to use those learnings to achieve specific goals and tasks through flexible adaptation. As for the characteristics of an intelligence system, we borrow from a, sch a schema developed by DARPA. DARPA uses four characteristics, perceiving, learning, abstracting, and reasoning. Perceiving is the ability to get information from rich, complex, subtle systems. Learning is to learn within the environment. Abstracting is to create new meaning, and reasoning is to plan and do to decide. Now, the contribution of each category evolved over time. The first wave was handcrafted knowledge or expert systems such as Deep Blue. This wave had a high reasoning attribute score, but almost none for the other attributes. Then next, due to improvements in data processing, data storage, and the availability of lots of low quality data, statistical learning or machine learning is the second wave. This is the current iteration of AI. Within this wave, we have high marks for perceiving and learning, but low marks for extracting and reasoning. Then the next future wave, conceptual adaptation is where DARPA hopes all four attributes will get high scores. DARPA envisions within this wave, the machine will be more a partner to humans. So you say we're in the second wave. Can you expand a bit on the structure of AI today? Yes. So another way to look at the problem or to recast it is this strong AI versus weak AI. Strong AI is where the machine becomes self-aware, right? Now, we're not there yet, and there are many companies out there today working on this problem, but it's a very hard problem. Meanwhile, weak AI is focused on specific tasks, right? And we see applications of 
wiki AI all around us. Wiki AI is implemented using machine learning. Machine learning is the mathematical process of where a computer uses multiple data to learn without direct instructions. So essentially, another way of taking it, machine learning uses methods to automatically detect patterns in data, then use the uncovered patterns to predict future data or future outcomes of interest. Some applications of machine learning includes predicting whether a patient hospitalized due to a heart attack will have a second heart attack. The prediction is usually based on demographic diet and clinical measurements for that patient. Another example is trying to predict the price of a stock six months from now based on a company's performance measure and economic data. Or the post office trying to identify handwritten zip codes from digitized image. Right? Or more, more commonly, Netflix suggesting a next movie based on your watch history. Uh, so as you can see, machine learning is in full use and it's all around us today. Well, those are some fascinating real life use cases for artificial intelligence. Um, uh, so what are some of the steps used for artificial intelligence, AI machine learning implementation? Great question, Tom. So the AI life cycle consists of four manageable steps. The first one, of course, you want to define the problem and specify the system objectives. The second step is where you're going to spend 85% of your time. You, you want to gather your data and you spend a lot of time cleaning this data. You're going to, this is an essential part because the data goes into your model will determine how strong or how successful your model is at predicting what it needs to do. The third step is you're actually going to model using machine learning algorithms. So you're going to build the model and you're going to test the AI system. The fourth step is production management. So you're going to deploy the system and you're going to engage in a feedback loop of continuous training and updates. So what are some of the uh, machine learning algorithms? So the machine learning algorithms today can be classified into four major groups. The first is supervised learning. Supervised learning is where the data has labels. Right? So you said you give the machine an example of an input and what the output should be, and the machine learns over time, and the goal is to make predictions based on new unseen data. The second category is unsupervised learning. In this case, there is, is the, data, the data is unlabeled. So the goal here is to extract key information from unlabeled data. The third case is semi-supervised. So the key word here is semi, so that means that only a small subset of the available data is labeled. And the fourth category is reinforced learning. In this category, an agent acts in an environment and is given rewards for performing appropriate action. The agent over time learns to maximize their reward. So given where we are in the evolution of AI or currently today, what makes a good machine learning problem? Yes. So a good machine learning problem is when you try to augment the specialized knowledge of a domain subject expert rather than replace it. Right? So any organization that generates or aggregates data should deploy at least one machine learning algorithm to make sense of that data. Right. And the task is always the same. The algorithm takes the data, identifies the pattern, and that forms the basis for future and further action. Yeah. 
So there's some incredible potential uh, for the role of AI in the national defense marketplace. So what is the role of machine learning at AI in the national security sector? The age of big data is here. John Keane said, when my information changes, I alter my conclusion. What do you do, sir? In the current data-driven world, the pace of data generation increases exponentially. Big data can quickly exceed our ability to extract and process the most relevant information in the data. How do we know and capture changes in our information? This is where AI, machine learning applications will help us. AI will transform all aspects of military affairs. AI applications will help armies prepare, sense, and understand, decide, and execute faster and more efficiently. Numerous weapon systems will leverage one or more AI technologies. AI systems will generate options for commanders and create battle networks connecting systems across all domains. It will transform logistics, procurement, training, design, and development of new hardware. Adapted AI will demand the development of new tactics and operational concepts. In the future, warfare will pit AI application versus AI application. The sources of battlefield advantage will shift from traditional factors like foresight and level of armaments to factors like superior data collection and assimilation. Connectivity, computer power, algorithms, and system security will decide the winners of tomorrow's wars. AI enable modeling, wargaming, and scenario analysis will help analysts discover potential courses of action predict adversarial decision points, identify goalposts of low probability and high impact scenario for US interests before they occur, and therefore help us preserve our way of life. So that can provide some powerful tools for uh, the, the US defense industry. So after ODNI launched the AIM initiative, a strategy for augmenting intelligence using machines in, in 2018, MEIS, our organization, decided to investigate how it can incorporate machine learning into its information dissemination workflow. Uh, can you describe, and you've been in front of this project, can you describe this project? Yes, so if we back up a bit and look at the cornerstone of Mission Essential Intelligence Solution. MEIS believe the characteristics of effective intelligence are timeliness, relevancy, accuracy, predictability, and tailored solutions. Right? We launch our project to help the national defense sector achieve the goals of effective intelligence. And we launched our projects with two goals in mind, distribution and automation. When we say distribution, for operational decision makers to make the best decision, we looked at rapid targeted dissemination. More operational decision makers we want to enable automated targeted delivery of time sensitive intelligence to users with the need to know. Right? This delivery, we hope using our AI tool will become more precise over time through the micro targeting of alerts and break even events or steady state content to our IC customers, even down to the individual level. Then the next goal, automation, was all about reducing human error and improving network performance and uptime through low or no 
touch configuration, orchestration, monitoring, assurance, and reactive, re reactive issue resolution. Kelly, you've described some incredible opportunities and potential with regard to AI. What are some of the challenges with implementing machine learning in the national defense sector? Great question, Tom. Apart from the usual concerns, such as ethics and bias, we have an additional concern within the national defense sector. That concern is no unique algorithm or model exists that can apply in all situations. And all of the self tools are not necessarily the best solution. Black boxes are bad in life or death situation. If a social media engine suggests the wrong article, movie, song, there is relatively no harm since you can simply skip that article, movie, or song. However, if the same black box suggests the wrong action to the war fighter, such as sending him, him or her the wrong replacement part in the middle of a, a firefight, lives can be in danger. Therefore, we must take our time to get this right. Certainly um, important uh, things to consider as we implement uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning. And thank you, Kelly, for joining me today. And we've certainly covered a lot of important information. And I know I, I certainly learned a lot. Um, machine learning and AI play an integral part of the national security strategy now and, 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 and going into the future. And I'm excited that you and, and certainly our team at MEIS are making an impact in this growing field. I know our brief conversation wasn't nearly enough to cover everything and it's a broad subject, so I look forward to continuing our conversation in the future. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Mission Essential Conversations, be sure to like this video and subscribe to see future content on language and Intel affairs. Thank you very much.